Hello and welcome. My name is Ralf Spenneberg. I work for the open source security game behind Steinfurt, Germany. We are a long-term partner of Tribe29. In addition to the product itself, we are offering trainings, consulting and support for Chicken K. This video will show you how to secure the Chicken K appliance using SSL. Why SSL? The appliance requires a login with user credentials. If you do not use SSL, these credentials are transferred in clear text via the network. This is never a good idea. In many environments, the appliance is configured to check these credentials using external provider like an Active Directory. Although the Active Directory protects these credentials and stores them in a secure way, if you do not use HTTPS for the communication with the appliance, the credentials are passed in clear text between your browser and the appliance. Certificates need to match the server you want to connect to. Therefore, it is important before creating certificates to decide what URL you want to use to connect to your Check&K appliance. I recommend using a DNS name. Alternatively, you can use an IP address. Changing either or both later requires a new certificate. If you want to use a DNS name, please ensure that the appliance is configured for this DNS name. All used identifiers, DNS, IP, and so on, must be part of the certif certificate using the subject alternative name. If you deploy the appliance in a cluster, ensure that both the individual names and addresses of each node and the name and address of the cluster IP address is added to the certificate so that it can be shared between the nodes. To create a self-signed certificate, navigate to the web configuration of your appliance. Go to device settings and then click on web access. Here we can create a new certificate. We want to create a self-signed certificate, so first we configure the self-signed certificate down here. Now we have to enter some data. Uh, you can enter the country name, the state or province, the locality name. I just enter the company name. Very important now are the additional host addresses or subject alternative names. Make sure that these match your DNS names you want to use or the IP addresses you want to use to access your appliance. If you deploy a cluster, make sure that the cluster name is here as well, and maybe the cluster IP address as well. Once you have added all the required data, the only thing you have to think about is the expiration period. Uh, if you use a self-signed certificate, you probably don't want to re renew it after two years and you might want to think about using a longer period or maybe a shorter period. This depends on your internal policies as well. Click Save and the new certificate has been created. Go back and now you can enable HTTPS and I would recommend to uh, use HTTPS enforced which will make sure that the appliance will redirect any HTTP traffic to HTTPS. But as I said, self-signed certificates are not recommended because they cannot be automatically trusted by your browsers. So therefore, what I would, what I would recommend is either creating a specific signed certificate for your appliance using the internal certificate authority or by installing a wildcard certificate. Let's first take a look at creating a certificate signing request, which can be signed by your uh, certificate authority. So go to the device settings, go to web access. So click new certificate, and then again, enter all the required subject alternative names for your appliance. Like DNS names and IP addresses. And down here, choose create a signing request. Click Save. Here we can download the certificate signing request. Once you have signed the certificate signing request with your internal certificate authority, you can then import the certificate into the appliance. On the web access page, there's this upload certificate button. And here we can choose what we want to upload. In this case, we want to upload a certificate. So choose the file which contains the signed certificate and then click Upload. And the certificate has been uploaded and activated. 
So now we can go back and we see the certificate authority that has signed the file. And again, we can now enable HTTPS in enforced mode. The last option is using a wildcard certificate. And let's take a look at how to install such a wildcard certificate in your appliance. Again, I'm starting from the web access page here and I click on upload certificate. And here I can now choose to upload the private key, the certificate, and if you need the certificate chain route. Uh, many certificate authorities use intermediate certificates and then the appliance is expected to provide this intermediate certificate as a chain to the browser. So let's just choose the correct files and then upload those files. Okay, let's click upload. And again, the private key, the certificate and certificate chain have been uploaded and activated. So now again, we have our certificate here installed. In this case, it's a certificate which has been issued by Let's Encrypt. It's a wildcard certificate. Uh, it was issued to this whole domain. And now we can choose again to enforce HTTPS and then save that. I hope this video was informative. Um, if you liked it, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. This helps the channel a lot. And uh, if you have any questions, please um, contact us and uh, or use uh, the comment option in, on YouTube and we will try to get back to you. Thank you very much and see you next time.